everyone, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks. Thanks for joining me again. Wanted to give you an overview of the latest project that I've got completed. And this is kind of a new, unique model. Now you've seen me build lots of Nautilus models, the 31 inch models and the 66 inch Nautilus. This one is right in between. This is a 48 inch, so about 1 50th scale. Um, and this is basically one of very few hulls that were done as prototypes for the EFX display models, uh, limited run of models that came out a few years ago. So this was a rotocast hull and I converted it to allow us to open it up and install some RC goodies inside so that we can operate it as a remote controlled submarine. So today is actually going to be its maiden voyage and you're going to join me for that later in the video. But first, I want to give you a little bit of a brief overview of the model, how it all goes together and show you how it works. All right, so we've got a few different things to point out here. We've got a four channel uh, radio system operating on 75 megahertz, which is what the approved frequency is for surface craft here in North America. Uh, this is a gas ballast system, so it's got some propel with a propel adapter here. And this is, of course, the watertight cylinder. And this is a small world models cylinder that I got uh, a little while ago, and it just fit perfectly in this model. Let's take a look uh, inside here. To get access to the hull, we simply remove the ram, lift up on the front, slide it forward, and that is it. Um, I'll show you on the inside of the hull, we've got our flotation foam set up and you can see this lead coming off of it. And that is for the LED lighting system. If you get a closer look in there, you can see right in that center section, there's like a little pot. And that's where all of the resistors are housed, all of the connections and that's in a waterproof epoxy encapsulation. Reason being is that this model is actually set up so that you can operate it in, uh, in brackish or salt water. And of course, for that, you wanna make sure that there are no exposed electrical leads. Um, so that is why all of those were attached with extra care to make sure that there were no short circuits. What I've got here is uh, a little adapter. This is a nine volt battery, and this will actually attach directly to that wiring lead that I just showed you so that you can display this model as a static display model without having to have the cylinder installed. Let's take a closer look at the cylinder itself. In the forward section, we have a ballast tank a uh, large opening on the bottom. You can see the workings of the actuator on the inside there. It uses a, a rolling cam to depress the plunger for the propel uh, and then also to actuate the vent valve up on the top. Uh, moving here, you can see I've got one of our um, voltage displays and when the cylinder is turned on, this will actually give you data about the state of the batteries and the current draw that's going on. Uh, I have got a remote on off switch installed in here. So if you take a look at the radio system, you got the key fob on the back and that's how you turn it on and off. Uh, got a 3D printed battery tray in the bottom, the three amp lithium polymer battery and a really cool Nautilus branded tray in there for all of the equipment. The, uh, the servos are housed in this rear compartment in the back, you can see the outputs for those on the bottom there. These are magnetic linkages. They just snap together, which is really great. You don't need to look at um, doing physical connections. It makes the installation really easy. Uh, and this is a waterproof lead for the lighting. Uh, we put that on there so that there is no corrosion that takes place. And this actually houses the antenna. It's run all the way out on here. We got a cap on the end. The cool thing about this is you can remove this cap and blow into it while the cylinder's under the water to look for leaks. That's really imp uh, important to test occasionally to make sure that there are uh, no leaks in your cylinder prior to operation. 
So let's take a look at how we go about uh, installing the watertight cylinder in the model. All right, installation of the watertight cylinder is really, really straightforward. We're just going to make sure that our linkages are pointed to the back so they mate up with the linkages in the boat. We're gonna grab our drive shaft, slip that into the adapter there. And then if we put our linkages down, they just snapped right in place. So they're connected now. Drop down our cylinder and there's a, a pin in this forward bulkhead. We're just going to um, align that with the hole in the bottom of the ballast tank, it slips in and now it can't move. Got a little piece of Velcro here. Just wrap it around and everything is in tight. There's no way that this can go anywhere while underway. Now what we're gonna do is uh, grab these guides and these are gonna be important and I'll show you why in a minute. Matching up black to black Pressing that down all the way and red to red in the front. Now what we're going to do is take our antenna and we're going to feed it through these guides out in front. And now, as I said, this is exceptionally important because as I said, we're going to be operating in salt water. Salt water basically short circuits the radio transmissions when it tries to propagate through the water. So what we've done here is we've actually held the antenna above the water line. So these radio signals have full access to the antenna above the water line, even when operating in salt water. So we'll take a quick look at how this is set up. You can see the linkages there mated to each other. Our main drive shaft in place. Our brackets, our Velcro, and in the front here we've got a lot of ballast weight. What you're going to want to do when you build these models, you want to create as big of a differential between the weight in the bottom and the foam on the top so that the model always wants to be oriented uh, vertically so that it has a writing moment in case it rolls back and forth. If we take a look at the back here, I've got this set up in a pretty slick manner. So um, this particular model has a tilting propeller arrangement so that the dive planes uh, are no longer necessary, which is good because in the Nautilus, they're basically next to useless. Uh, so this propeller tilts up and down, and I'll show you that in a moment after I turn the model on. But to gain access to all of the inner workings in there is a really simple matter. You simply pull these two pins out and the entire tail section lifts right off. So maintenance is exceptionally easy to do. What you're going to see right here is uh, a stop so that the tilting propeller is not able to tilt beyond where it should and impact the tail. So you can adjust these stops to make sure that that happens. So with all that said, let's, uh, let's turn our cylinder on and I'll show you uh, some of the features in operation. So let's test the functionality of the submarine. I got my radio transmitter turned on. That's always the first step. I'm going to hit the on button. Powered up the display. And it's showing that I got a 0 0.08 amp draw on the battery, 12.5 volts of <coughs> power. And uh, what we're going to do now, I'm just going to show you how these work. So I'm going to power up the, uh, the throttle and you can see that this is really, really smooth at low RPM. That's the hallmark of a well-engineered system. That's the throttle forward and reverse. Here is my tilting propeller mechanism. Take a close look at that. And the rudder left and right. So everything seems to be working really, really well. Full throttle dry, it draws about half an amp of power. All right, I want to show you the charging procedure for the liquid air on board. We're going to use this Badger Propel. 
and the propel can adapter. What we're going to do is we're going to push it down firmly on the top with my finger on the uh, blow button on the transmitter. So we're going to push down firmly and we're just going to burp it just a little bit, two or three little uh, burps. And that's going to displace the air in that charge tank and let more liquid in. So now we've got a full charge on board that should be good for about eight to 10 cycles of the ballast tank altogether. Looks like a ghost. Well, as you can see from the video on the pond, the Nautilus actually behaved exceptionally well, uh, it was perfectly trimmed, uh, ballast system worked out exactly right uh, where I wanted it, where it was ballasted just slightly positive. Um, but if you will notice, there was not a lot of one thing and that was speed. Uh, it was exceptionally slow. I was a little bit surprised at that. I thought the motor uh, and gearing in the cylinder was sufficient, but when I took it out, that little motor had been working really really hard. So, back to the drawing board, we need a refit and uh, I just finished doing that. I'm going to show you what I did. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm really excited to see what this thing will do now. So, the first thing that you're going to notice is I have swapped out the stock Nautilus propeller in favor of this highly efficient three-bladed prop. Now the cool thing about this is you can just remove the tail section uh, and with two little set screws you can swap this back in um, and use it on the pond or just for display if you wanted to but I really wanted to see what we can do in terms of performance on this boat. It would be great to get a really significant bow wake from this boat. Um, the other thing I was not happy with was the turning radius so I did my typical uh, split rudder with some clear plastic film in there and as you can see you really can't see it and it's completely removable it's just friction fit just slips right out so again on display you'll never see it let's take a look at what I did inside um, you'll notice this monster in here this is a 12 volt Pitman motor super high efficiency uh, internally noise suppressed um, this is a nice motor. So I had to do some modifications to my equipment tray to make it fit, but it fit nicely, actually quite efficiently. So um, why don't we power it up here and you can see the revised powertrain. I'll turn my... There we go, and I'll show you the power readout. 12.48 volts. 0.08 amp draw just kick in the motor here so you can see it nice and smooth if that does not get this model up and going nothing will so super stoked to get it back on the pond today hopefully the weather holds out for me so stay tuned We'll drop this thing back in the water and see what she can do.
It's not very good if you can't go backwards. I was going to say, that's, a, that's amazing. Now, Bob, can you control the uh, tip? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, as you can see, the uh, second test of the Nautilus went exceptionally well, certainly much better than it was before. Lots of speed uh, in this boat, and it handles like a dream. I'm really happy with it. Um, I want to go over a couple of post-operation um, things that you should look for after you run your boat, just to make sure that it stays with you for a long time. Um, one thing that you might want to do, and, and I've built it this way for access, you can um, open up the wheelhouse, that's just held down magnetically. You can wipe down the insides of the wheelhouse to make sure that you don't have any sand or uh, weeds or anything like that in there. This is held down uh, magnetically. It's a pretty slick uh, system actually, as is the raker arch that just slips in the front there and snaps down in place. It's nice and secure on there. The other thing that you're going to want to do is obviously break back in to the model and you're going to um, check it to make sure that there's no condensation inside the watertight cylinder. And if so, it's fairly common to get a drip in there and you'll see condensation. You want to pull that cylinder right out, check for water uh, in the bottom. Um, if so, immediately open it up dry it out and you can go through the testing procedure by putting the cylinder in the water blowing into the tube looking for bubbles. The other thing that you're going to want to do obviously is charge up the battery so open up the cylinder, disconnect the battery and keep it disconnected uh, for storage because the remote on off switch will draw just a little bit of current and it will suck your battery dry if you leave that plugged in. Other than that just make sure that all of your uh, seals are lubricated with a little bit of silicone oil uh, as well as your rear drive pushings and such and you should be good to go. Thank you very much for joining me taking a look at this 48th scale or, or sorry 48 inch 150th scale Disney Nautilus model. I hope you enjoyed it. By all means uh, if you like what you see subscribe to my channel visit my website nautilusdrydocks.com got lots of cool stuff on there. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Catch you next time.